All right. Now we're doing free code camp, JavaScript algorithms and data structures, functional programming, refactor global variables out of a function. All right. Well, so far we've seen two distinct principles for functional programming. The first one is we're gonna avoid altering of variables or objects. And uh, that means we're gonna create new variables and objects and return them if need be from a function. But here's a hint right here and it's gotta do something with this. Uh, using something like const new r equals r of r. So if we would change, if we put in here, uh, new list equals this list, uh, where r var is an array, will simply create a reference to the existing variable and not a copy. So changing the value in new r or if or new list in this case would change the value in in r var or new list or pardon me or in book list I should say. Uh, that being said, the second principle is declare function parameters. Right. So any computation inside a function depends only on the arguments passed to the function and not on any global object or variable. Right. Well, there we go. So adding one to a number is not very exciting, but we can apply these principles when working with arrays or more complex objects. All right. So we're going to rewrite the code over here. So the global array book list is not changed inside either function. The add function should add the given book name to the end of the array passed to it and return a new array or list. Uh, the remove function should remove the given book name from the array passed into it, all right? So here's the note where uh, both functions should return an array and any new parameters should be added before the book name parameter. All right, so that means we're gonna be adding parameters before this, that's a hint also. So basically, uh, if we look at this stuff, it will pretty much, the, uh, it'll, the if statement and this uh, push, it'll pretty much do what we want. All we're trying to do here is uh, turn, make this into a different list so we can manipulate that instead of actually manipulating the book list, all right? So let's come over here and we've got uh, the add function and we're gonna have the book name as the parameter, but we also wanna pass the list in here. So in front of the book name, we're gonna put list like this, comma. And we could have put it afterwards, but I'm sure that the program is checking to see if it's before, so let's just put it before, all right? So this list is something we're gonna pass into here. And what we wanna do is now change this list to a new variable. So we'll come down here and we'll say something like this. Uh, let new list equal list. But like this thing says over here, if we just leave it like this, it'll just refer to exactly this thing and it'll change the book list. So like we did in a previous lesson, we're gonna wrap this thing up in uh, brackets like this and then drop off a, um, what is it? The spread syntax in front of it like that. And that's gonna turn this thing into comma separated values and then put the comma separated values inside of the array, right? Because if we did this, it would just be the array inside the array, right? So now that we've got this taken care of, we're gonna change this stuff up to uh, reflect the new list. So we'll take new list right here, copy that, drop it, drop it. And that should take care of business for add. So let's come down here and let's say console.log, cons, well, that's not it. Console.log add, and then we'll say uh, book list, book list, and for book name, we'll just put book because I don't have any books sitting around. Uh, okay, so that worked for add, but let's, uh, let's take this, let's do, take the actual function call and uh, bring that down here. And then let's say list after that. Let's say um, let's say console.log book list, all right, to check. Let's get rid of this right here so we can look at it. And you can see it's not added to it, but if we took this stuff out of here, it would definitely add book to the end of the book list, which we can't have. So let's put that back and it works like that. Now we're gonna take care of remove book list. All right, or the remove uh, function, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, so let's just put re remove right here so we will uh, we don't have to do it later. Remove, all right. And we'll put the console.log that, and then we'll do that in a second. All right, so now what we're gonna do is change this up to be just like this. So we'll take this list comma, and we'll drop this off right here, all right. 
And then we'll come down here and we'll take this part, copy that, and drop that off right here. Give it a little tab to make it a little formatted. And then we'll take this new list and we'll drop it off here and we'll drop it off here. And we'll drop this, we'll put a list right here, list right there, all right? Because uh, this isn't, this isn't this book list. This one is referring to this list right here. All right. So there we go. All right. So this should take care of business. So now let's remove a one of these. So disquisitionaries arithmetic. All right. Uh, it turns out I thought these were written by Latin people, but this one was written by like some guy named Gauss. And this one was written by Isaac Newton. I don't know why. Back in those olden days, they were writing books in Latin. Like, get out of here, guy. Who are you trying to impress? But those are old days, right? Anyway, let's do this. Boom. And we see book list still looks good like that. Let's do a console.log on this whole thing. Uh, well, we didn't. Hold on. Yeah, let's do a console.log on this to see it get removed for real. Boom. And you see it took uh, disquisitionaries arithmetic out of there, all right? So it looks like it works. Let's check the code. Looks good and submit it. All right. Now we're on to use the map method to extract data from an array. And we'll see you next time.